News Flash is brought to you by Franco Trading Enterprise. Steel. Fun. Pa pa pa. Fee. You're still watching Prime Morning. It's time for us to delve into what the newspapers have for us. I mean, time for News Flash, and it's proudly brought to you by Franco Trading Enterprise. Franco Trading Enterprise has got you covered when it comes to gadgets. Now, are you looking for mobile phones? Let's talk about the brands of Nokia. Mm, they have solid mobile phones. Let's talk about iPhones, Samsung phones. They have all of that. Not just that. If you want television sets, if you want microwaves, if you want tabletop fridges, if you want uh, CCTV cameras, they have all of that covered for you. All you have to do is to download that app on your phone. So go, go to Google Play Store and download the Franco Trading app on your phone. Please and please, again, do not go to Google to pick any number because there are too many scammers on there, okay? So don't go there and then you pick you pick a number, call somebody, and the person will tell you, oh, send me more, more, blah, blah, blah. No, just make sure you download the app or pick the number on our screen right now and call them please. Or you can go to our website www.francotradingenterprise.com Franco Trading Enterprise, still phone pa -pa -pa -fie. Now today actually we are going to be talking about uh, something that I know will spark a lot of conversations because we've been talking about it. Ghanaians have been asking for a timetable from ECG for quite a while now and uh, it seems that the timetable never surfaced. Uh, ECG told us that the problem was being solved. At a point in time, we saw the energy minister, uh, Matthew Pukuprempe, did say that he doesn't see why we should have a timetable. If you want to have your timetable, go find one yourself. Now, PURC is not playing anymore. They have fined the former board members of ECG a certain amount of money for refusal of giving out a timetable. We are delving into that conversation. And Isaac OVAJ will be joining us to give us every nitty gritty of that particular situation that is happening. And then we talk a little bit about uh, Madame Sedina, who has been jailed 10 years in absentia, actually. She was the former boss of Maslock, and, uh, you know, she's been jailed because she's caused 90 million Ghana cities' financial loss to the state. We'll talk about that as well, and we need to hear from you. Let me welcome my guests who are seated right now. It's been a while since I saw this fair man, half cast. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> good morning, Roslyn. How are you? Very good morning to you. Good morning. Um, and a very good morning to your viewers. Um, let me also quickly say a very good morning to His Excellency Dr. Mohamedou Baumia. Uh, whenever I come here, I go to any other station, I say that um, I believe that God will bestow upon him the ultimate blessing of leadership of this country come 7 January 2025. Um, Dr. Baumia is a special person. And he's special in the sense that he's the only living leader in this country whose vision, whose idea that has been implemented in Ghana is now being copied by England. That's important, all right? And I'm talking of the Zipline medical drone delivery system that has saved thousands of lives, mm. right? Mm -hmm. Anybody watching, anyone listening to me can pick their phones and check Zipline UK. UK is now considering using Zipline drone, uh, medical drone delivery systems. And so for such a person with such an idea, with such a vision, that's being copied by people we aspire to be, by country we aspire to be. We can't, we can't, we can't, you know, we, we, we can't afford to, 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 you know, not to give him the, 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 the mantle, give him the, the driver's seat and hold, the, you know, the steering by himself and then steer us right to, to, to the, you know, to the, to the promised land, you know, as is promised. He's got bold visions for the country. I mean, as we say in this country, that anybody who climbs a fruitful tree is a person you push further up. It's important that Ghanaians understand the vision uh, Dr. Baumia stands for and push him further up there to bring us more good food for our country. Of course, he's promised that he's got both solutions. He's promised that he's going to give, and his presidency, he's going to have 2,000 megawatts of solar energy. That's very important. That's bold. 2,000 megawatts is more than twice, in fact, it's about twice across the border. That's very big. Why so? Because in, in all nations, right, you need, to, you need to leverage on what you have. And we have abundance of the sun. Right. Why are we going up and down, <laughs> buying fuel, left, right, center, powering plants here and there, when we have so much energy, you know, to, to tap from? Okay. That's the bold solution. Okay. Of course, that's the promise that he's going to make sure that, you know, um, 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 he's, going to, he's going to train one million youth in ICT. Imagine the jobs he's going to create. Imagine the impact he's going to have on, you know, the youth and the impact he's going to have on communities. 
Okay. Good. You know. Yes. Yeah, so Thank let me so say. You know, and of course, <laughs> let me say good morning to to my my, my yeah, brother here. Your brother. Yes. Let me introduce your brother, uh, Adel Umar Ibrahim. He still owes me still from last week. Good morning, Adel. <laughs> Adel has a big post in NDCU. <clears throat> Adel, what's what's your post? Sweet sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet 16 forever. Good morning, Rosie. Good morning. How are you? Uh, good morning to Kweku Kwate. And uh, Kwashi, actually. Kwashi. Oh, yes. I'm not a minister. It's Kweku Kwate. No, <laughs> Kwashi. Uh, forgive me. And um, yeah, I can understand, you know, their current introductions almost all the time, you know, putting Baumia, you know. I, the man is an old good. You can't sell. It's not. It's not gonna work. Like, yeah, they can keep trying, but you know, it, it, it's not like the time before 2016 when no one knew him. Like, we didn't really know the kind of person he is. He's struggling with his campaign. You know, like when he's going around and he's trying to speak, you can tell. And it's a bad idea. And you know, and, and I have good ideas. Give me this idea. Move from mommy. Move for car. No mommy. <laughs> I won't, I, won't, I won't give any credence to this one. Let's, let's move on. <laughs> anyway, uh, the conversation is definitely going to be sweeter than honey today. Let me quickly read what the news reference have for us, and then we will uh, raise Isaac on the phone to join us. The Ghanaian publisher newspaper is the first newspaper I'm reading. The Ghanaian publisher promote peace, tolerance, and Natoshi charges leaders. Green Ghana Day targets 10 million trees as Jinapo demands more conservation conservation efforts. ex maslock boss jailed 10 years for causing 90 million Ghana cities financial loss to the state and definitely we'll talk a little bit about that. The Ghanaian Times newspaper is the next newspaper that we are taking. The Ghanaian Times newspaper. Former Maslok CEO jailed 10 years in absentia and gets um, okay head of operations gets five years. So Miss Sedina uh, Tamaklo at your news picture is right here. Economic impact of Akosombokong Dam spillage affected communities and lost 1.6 billion Ghana cities in agri livelihoods. FAO's assessment says so. And for the banner headline, boots for re uh, reforestation, Green Ghana Day launched to plant 10 million tree seedlings nationwide. I'll do the Daily Graphic newspaper next. The Daily Graphic newspaper, 2024 Green Ghana Day launched 10 million trees to be planted. PURC finds ECG 5.8 million Ghana cities for service delivery breaches. Odor Basin bridges causing floods to be removed. And former Maslock boss jailed 10 years in absentia. The New Finder newspaper, 10 million trees to be planted by June. Religious leaders must champion tolerance, peace, says Natoshi. And GRA steps up a game to enforce tax on foreign incomes of resident Ghanaians. That will be all for uh, the Finder newspaper. And I will do the Daily Guide newspaper. Uh, the banner headline, again, is with regards to the former uh, Maslok boss who has been jailed 10 years. NDC runs from a Jisobai elections. Men's Gold customers petition AG over num one properties. Uh, PURC finds ECG board 5.9 million Ghana cities. And my credit score gets credit bureau license. Let's see some entertainment here, yes. KK Food Soup denies Oga targeted Samini. Makeup artists in Nollywood, both accident and buried. And High Life Not Dead, this is coming from Lucky Mesa. That will be all with regards to what the newspapers have for us. Um, we actually went to town to have a conversation with people to get to know what they think about the timetable that PRC requested from ECG and also the fine that have been put on these former board members of ECG. Let's take a look at it. Responsibility and you fail to do it, and it's like they've been partial to you and they've given you um, a fine to pay. So I think it's fair. A lot of people's things have been spoiled, but the fine that they are they are supposed to pay i don't think it can make up for the the things that they've spot but um since that they are, it's legal they've been legally fined i think it's 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 good it's good because um it's like they are giving justice to those whose things have been spot yeah. i want to ask ECG, they're prepaid and then the post paid i've been paying what do they use the money for 
because we've been buying prepaid and here is the case um, our lights normally go so there is light off so what do they use the money for what brought about the debts it's fair they should pay because yes they should pay and then they should involve us they should pay they should give us light but they should pay because the lights the people we've been buying what do they use the money for if if they had used the money wise there wouldn't be any debts i feel i feel like it's fair yeah, because they, they, are, they are supposed to publish the, the schedule out and they didn't do that. So they have to pay that to compensate what they've done, like what, what they didn't do. Let me put it that way. It's, it's, I think it's fair they pay that money because if I said they should add some, that means it will, you know, come from us. We that we are buying the prepaid. Yeah, so that's how it goes. So it's okay for them for now, yeah. To be good for them to add some, because they are punishing us a lot. Okay. I think we have to add some to it. They will pay. The thing that they do, I don't understand them. Uh, uh, so if you add some, you pay, yes. Uh. To me, I think it is fair because it's your responsibility and you fail to do it. And it's like they've been partial to you and they've given you news last segment and uh, we went to town like I said earlier and this is what people had to say with regards to the fine that have been given to the ECG former ECG board members those who served from uh, you know from the time that they were in there till March so let's look at that time frame let's even look at from even 2020 to uh, March those who served from 2020 till March and they are out they are the ones who have been fined and we have Isaac Kofi J my colleague from Joy News so joining us this morning he's a data analyst and he's going to tell us everything with regards to this hello Kofi good morning, good morning Rosie. how are you hello Kofi Hello? Hello, Rosalind. Okay, great. Now I can hear you. How are you? Well, not so good. I mean, I slept in darkness yesterday, so I mean... Mm. But don't forget that there is no doom so. It is actually called intermittent power outage. Well, however, you know, anyone would choose to call it. It's just that our power to our homes has not been stable. So, I mean, whether it's Doomso or Iraq power supply or DoomCC, uh, the most important thing is that, I mean, we do not have the, the electricity we need to perform certain basic functions and that's affecting us. But then again, don't forget that the power outage problem has been solved. So if you have any issue, it's to do with your neighborhood. I'm just giving you a reminder, just in case you've forgotten. Oh, anyway, that's let's fine. quickly delve into, you know, what has been trending uh, since last night with regards to the former board members who have been fined 5.8 million Ghana cities for refusal of delivering a timetable to Ghanaians, meaning that they've caused some financial loss to Ghanaians, those who have their businesses, some businesses have been collapsed and all of that. Uh, let's talk about what actually contributed to this. Uh, well, so this is uh, part of the IMF benchmarks that we have to meet. Can you imagine, as a country, this is the first time I'm even having to get data from the uh, ECG and knowing their monthly um, revenue and, and how much they collect and what have you. But for the IMF, it would have been very, very difficult to have some of this transparency. Uh, but we are under an IMF program, and those are some, these are some of the positives that we can draw from the IMF program. It brings transparency. Now, let's start from the new structural benchmark that Ghana has to meet under the IMF, which has necessitated all of this, um, you know, data analysis and then also validation of uh, report. So, according to the IMF, uh, you know, government itself found out that in what they call the energy sector restructuring program. Um, ECG, which is a major stakeholder in Ghana's energy sector, uh, has too many bank accounts. Just imagine, there are 23 uh, commercial banks in Ghana, but ECG has 61 separate bank accounts. And uh, according to the, uh, you know, the Article 4 review documents of the IMF, uh, Ghana is supposed to, uh, you know, uh, converge or bring all or consolidate all of these 61 uh, bank accounts into one single account so that we can give a quarterly 
uh, you know, analysis and then also uh, audits of this um, 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 bank account. But ECG were asked to do a number of things by the PRC uh, so that we can be in line with the IMF, you know, conditionalities. Mm -hmm. And according to the PRC, ECG failed to do about four of the orders that they gave. Most of them were very crucial, including uh, an order to provide a doom sort timetable. And then also the fact that ECG attributed most of their, um, you know, uh, plan outages between uh, the period of uh, 1st January 2024 to March uh, 18, 2024, to 40 transformers. Now, based on the data that um, ECG presented to the PRC, they had to subject it to validation and analysis. Now, according to the PRC, uh, about, um, you know, ECG has about one, uh, 715 transformers scattered across the length and breadth uh, of the country, not including the northern sector anyway, because that's under NETCO. Now, per the analysis, uh, it is only uh, about 89 of the transformers that were overloaded. So how come ECG is attributing the DOOMSOC to uh, overloaded transformers and that majority which is more than 590 uh, out of the uh, 715 transformers are within uh, what they call the range of 70 to uh, 100 uh, load and so they are not really uh, uh, overloaded so how come ECD is attributing uh, the doom sort to overloaded transformers so there could be a certain underlying factor that ECG is not trying to communicate but remember last week, uh, Joy News cited a document uh, from, um, you know, uh, ECG concerning uh, Grid Coast, um, you know, activities, trying to, you know, put the blame on Grid Coast, saying that uh, the reason why we are not able to put out a timetable uh, is because Grid Coast has not been forthcoming and has not been very regular and has not been prompting us in time uh, in terms of when to shed load. In fact, the... PRC regulation requires that ECG, uh, you know, put out a timetable uh, for load shedding. They are supposed to inform us at least three days before uh, they put off the light. Uh, but because of Grico's inability to provide ECG with the information ahead of time, according to ECG, sometimes Grico tells them to shed load 30 minutes or uh, one hour or two hours before they even start doing it, which to them does not help them plan. And so just like you have on your screens, those were some of the orders that uh, PRC, you know, feels that, uh, you know, after analysis, uh, you know, came to a conclusion that ECG did not obey this um, orders. And some came with fines. I mean, uh, the fine of 5.9 million Ghana CDs that uh, PRC is now placing on the ECG board members. They were actually contemplating where to place this fine whether to place it on ECG as a company, but they realized that if they place it on ECG as a company, that will affect the revenue function of ECG. And if you look at the fact that they are even struggling to collect more for the cash waterfall mechanism, uh, it will not be prudent to put this fine of almost 6 million Ghana cities on ECG. So they decided uh, then to spread it or put the fine on the board members who served between, who were still in office, uh, in the period under review, which is 1st January to March 18, 2024. Okay. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I can't just imagine that ECG has uh, 61 bank accounts, and they told the PRC yesterday that they ditched out or they actually had to, um, you know, um, carry out over 4,000 power outages between um, um, you, the period of 1st January to 18 March. When we did a calculation yesterday, uh, it simply meant that ECG was doing, um, you know, power outages um, on average of 40 each day. Wow. Anyway, Kofi, uh, let me ask you this. Um, if the board refuses to pay this fine, what happens? Well, there are different, you know, opinions to this. Yesterday, I listened to former Prime Minister, Dr. Kamala Donko, who feels that uh, he's in line with the fine, but he feels that the fine is, is too high. Mm and that uh, PRC should do something about it. There are some who are also arguing that there's no, there's no law that binds um, the PRC, the ECG board members 
for to pay this fine. Some also believe that they can uh, file for an appeal and then also request for a reduction. But beyond the fine, there's a critical uh, problem that needs to be addressed, which has to do with finding money to buy fuels to power the IPPs and then also to do power generation. In fact, if you look at our reliable um, you know, generation at the moment, it's, it keeps reducing because some of the IPPs have, have shut down because they do not have fuel to, to actually start production. Mm. And then yesterday we realized an interesting findings from the cash waterfall mechanism where we all failed to talk about one key component of the cash waterfall mechanism, which is the finance ministry who has to be dragged into this conversation because they are a key um, you know, players in the cash waterfall mechanism. It's not just ECG, it's not just grid coke. They're supposed to be the finance ministry uh, who is supposed to provide, uh, you know, the top up uh, that um, um, uh, ECG needs to pay uh, the, the IPPs and other power producers. Now, we've been looking at the data, and if you look at the, IP, the um, class waterfall mechanism, for instance, ECG, there's a categorization of the sector players into category category A and B, mm. where we have the A being uh, the IPPs. Now, if you look at the data, ECG has been complying with payment to the IPPs, but they are not doing it to the category B, you know, uh, guys who are usually state-owned enterprises. So we ask a very simple question. Why are you treating uh, the category A, um, you know, power producers uh, with some sort of agency and respect, but you are treating... Uh, the category B guys with some sort of disdain, and that uh, b based on the PRC findings since August 2023, ECG is supposed to uh, pay them uh, some 446 million Ghana CDs. The money has been uh, allocated to them, but the payment has not gone through since August 2023. But, so, um, you know, as of last month, we know that, you know, um, Finance Ministry was owing ECG because they asked them to finance a certain amount of money with regards to fuel. Has that money been paid? That money, no updates yet, but if you read the PRC's update somewhere March or February 2024, you realize that since August 2023, the finance ministry is supposed to pay a top up of some 200 million Ghana cities. So and that money that is still period, being owed. That money is still being owed. We, don't, we do not have any updates now. That, according to the ECG, uh, they actually anticipated that they were going to have issues with fuel supply. So they reached out to the finance ministry if they can go ahead to buy the fuel. Finance ministry gave them the go ahead and buy the fuel. We reimburse you when we get the money. But since August 2023, uh, that money has not been paid according to the PRC. I do not know if there's any new update to this. Okay. But what we know is that uh, the finance ministry is owing ECG and in the cash waterfall mechanism has not been forthcoming in terms mm. of the top-ups that they are supposed to pay for us to be able to, you know, um, cushion. So, so, so uh, this is why I actually ask... You know, yeah. This is why I asked the question, if the board members refuse to pay this 5.9 million Ghana cities, what happens? Will they be jailed because they refuse to pay it? And not, not just that, I really want to know one thing, and I know that Ghanaians will be asking, if this money is paid, what will the money be used for? Will it be given to the people as a compensation? Or what will PURC use the money for? Well, it's, there's an option. It's, it's pay or face a fine. Pay or, you know, face a jail term. So that's according to the PRC. So there's a jail term attached to it if you decide not to pay. And, I mean, if you look at the money, which is uh, around 6 million Ghana cities, it is not going to come to the PRC directly. It's going to go into a joint account held by the Finance Ministry and the Ministry of Energy. And this money, if paid by the board members, is supposed to go into a fuel account. And okay. that fuel account is supposed to reflect in the cash waterfall mechanism pool for the PRC to validate and then also um, consider the next move that they'll take. So the money is not going to come to consumers as a compensation. It's going to go into a fuel account that the uh, PRC will validate. All it's right. a joint account held by the Ministry of Energy and okay. the okay. Finance Ministry. And before I let you go, I think Kweku Kwashi has a question. Kweku, you want to... <laughs> oh, it's okay. All right, so it's okay. Uh, so I can let you go now. Thank you so much for joining us. We are super grateful.
Hello, Kofi. Hi, Rosla, I can hear you. Yes, I'll say thank you for joining us. I have one question, but I'm, oh. I'm being told I don't have the time to ask the question, so I have to let you go. But I wish I could ask you that question. Uh, sure. Can I ask you? Okay, let me ask you the question. Oh. So oh, the, yeah, yeah, the question is, why the board members and not ECG as a company who have been fined? Well, I mean, if you look at 5.8 at the moment where we find ourselves as a country and the fact that every penny that ECG raises must go into the cash waterfall mechanism. And they are not even, they are not even able to meet PRC's benchmark of 98%. So submit 98% of what you generate. ECG was expected to generate some 8 billion Ghana cities within the period and a review. In fact, they were only able to generate 4.9 billion. That tells you the kind of shortfall ECG is dealing with. So slapping the company with a fine of almost 6 million Ghana cities is significant. And that could affect or distort the cash waterfall mechanism where some may be allocated a certain amount of money, but they may, but they may never be able to get it because that money will, may go into fuel supply or other things. So ECG uh, is not in a very good um, financial position at the moment to you know, take in or actually be slapped with such a fine, according to the PRC's own analysis. Okay. And they feel that the board members um, were sort of a bit negligent. I mean, they were supposed to take some of the decisions. And so if um, they sat there for ECG to uh, do all of these things, then it's appropriate to slap them with a fine of almost six million dollars. Right. Thank you so much for joining us. We are super grateful. We'll call on you anytime we need you. The intelligence that is a coffee. You're welcome. <laughs> right, let me come to the studio and have a conversation with my guests. I know they are very ready for this. And um, I thought Kweku had questions, but Kweku said he didn't. No, I had no question. I'm just listening to him. Okay. No so, Kweku, um, what do you think about this? Because 5.9 million Ghana cities on the board is quite huge. But then Ghanaians are happy because they felt that they should have been given a timetable. Yes, um, I think that we, we, we all would agree that the power sector in the sector has got some challenges now. <coughs> Uh, there's, you know, part, I in several parts, you know, I think two, two places, um, Accra and Kumasi. Let me say that it's not nationwide, all right? There are some places we don't explain that at all. And so basically in Accra and some parts of Kumasi. It's a challenge, no two ways about that. And, um... And Takradi. And okay. Obwasi. Yeah, but it's pocket, you know, it's not really, it's not really widespread as, we've, mm. you know, we've had before in the, in the past. And that brings me quickly back to you know, what um, His Excellency Dr. Baumi has promised this country of giving us a 2,000 megawatt solar, uh, solar power. And that's important because, as you had, had him mentioned, we're paying for fuel that we don't control. We have no control in the fuel economy of this country. It's being controlled by other power somewhere. You understand me? So it's pricing and so on. It's all affecting you. So it's, 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 a, very, it's a very important point to make. The once Baumi comes into office, that dependence on, you know, fuel and so on, Will go down, mm. and they will be very independent. Uh, and be able to have a, a, thing that you a, a, a consistently. The full thing you mentioned is quite interesting because you know, some time back, let me say last year, we heard of the gold for oil, yeah. and so we, as Ghanaian citizens, were very excited about it because we knew that was going to regulate the price of oil for us. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, as much as we don't control the price on the market, uh, we still know that we are having gold for oil, so it should have some sort of control, and things should be a bit better, right? No, the, the gold for oil actually is supposed to help our forex or foreign exchange, you know, demands on, on, on central okay. government as a main thing. Right. It's got nothing to do with the energy and all that. It's gold for oil. It's, you know, supposed to maintain the, the, the currency as a main thing because we, we have to always go and find dollars we don't control to go and buy fuel. So if we have gold can leverage to exchange, that's okay. All right? That's another, another topic. I can go in there and discuss a, a, a lot of stuff with the, with the gold for oil. And so, yes, I, I, I understand, you know, what we're going through. And uh, Ghanaians should be rest assured that the government is working to make sure it's all, it's all sorted out. Mm. Uh, and so back to the, to the um, PURC and their fines to the ECG yeah. board. Um, I think that um, the PURC, as clearly we know, is supposed to be in between the consumers and the distributors that's being ECG. And the PURC clearly is doing their work. They're supposed to hold... ECG accountable to ensure that people who consume the power are okay. <coughs> and that in times also when 
you know, they have to come on the side of the ECG to say increase tariffs. They've, they've, they've done that in Sami to be able to convince the consumers that listen, you're paying too small for it. It's important we, we up it up so we, you know we, we pay right prices for it. So I think they are doing they're doing their work. And I think you know uh, commendations should go to government for allowing them to do their work without you know those strings anywhere. They can't do anything right? about it because well, DRC is a body, a regulatory body, so I, I think you, government can't do anything. I, I understand, but we know that you know governments have a control. Right? They but, don't have control. But we believe in the rule of law and we're allowing them to do what you they are have to do. You're not allowing them. So that's, that's a plus to government. Um, no, that's not a plus to um, government. PRC is a body, a regulatory body that government cannot interfere in whatever they do. I, I think you should understand government pays them anyway. Uh, but <laughs> it's still that it still cannot government do anything so about it. The bottom line is that the law is working. We are allowing the law to work without much interference, which is a very good thing for, for, for government. We believe in, 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 in democracy and the rule of law. And so um, the interesting point here is having to find the board members such huge amounts of money. Um, I think, first of all, I would say, to me, it may be a signal that PURC is serving to other board members and potential board members in the future. Because um, I would have thought that ECG being a limited liability company, you find ECG itself and other board members. It's a huge amount of money, almost 6 million Ghana cities. Yeah. If the PURC itself is saying that ECG might find it difficult to pay. I wonder how easy it will be for board members to pay that money. Mm. <laughs> Hope you understand me. So um, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how you know it's 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 being Georgia to see you know um, the end of it. But the bottom line is that a signal is being sent that when you are put in the role to make sure that people get what they want and what they deserve, you make sure you 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 check and deliver it. You understand me? And so I, I think it's a it's a plus for government. <coughs> Let me say that it's a plus for government. Uh, let's see how how that goes, and let's see how, how they does find the government money to come pay. The, the come in here. Oh, but I'm just saying that I've just told you how. I mean, this, I don't see as far as I'm concerned, though, this is supposed to be the first time mm. board members of ECG are being fined. You understand me? And I'm saying that government has allowed PRC to do its work without interference, because some government could interfere with them and say that. Just don't, go, don't go and find them. How? Nobody is above the law. I, you can't I, go above the law. This no, is an it, independent it would, it would body be, that no they, government can actually any interfere. Interference wouldn't be above law issues. It would be what? Government is government. Uh -huh. Government could have control over things. Government is not but above the law. Government allows things. Government this time is saying that go ahead and do your work. In the interest of the Ghanaian people, just go ahead and do your work. I think it's a plus, you understand? So it's, it's something new, and let's see how. How, how, how that goes. Okay. Right? What I know for sure is that whatever challenge the government is facing, whatever challenge the power sector is facing, the sector is facing, a lot is being done to make sure it's, you know, it's, uh, it's addressed. All right. Adele. Rosalind. Yes. You know, what we're having to deal with is um, the basic issues of what you would want to call karma. And I use the word karma because just some years back, you can understand their difficulty. Like some years back, the kind of noise they made. So it is a bit difficult admitting to the situations that we find ourselves in. Because then if you do, the election is lost pretty much. You know, part of the reasons why the NDC lost in 2016 was because of Tumsor. So it's a difficulty. And I can understand that. But let me clarify a few things before we even go into it. Now, the issue of we have control and government this time is allowing people to do their work and all of that it also tells you the kind of mentality this government has they, they feel and have this urge that they they must be able to pinpoint how they want things done regardless of what the constitution says they have to have their way you know and they've been doing this you know for a long time now nobody nobody has the power to do anything it's like he's doing whatever he wants to do until he leaves power and we'll deal with it when you come to PRC, I, I, I told him, I made him aware that government does not have a hand in it. Government cannot interfere. No, yeah, 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 but in as much as you are insisting that, he's still telling you that, look, we could have done something because they've been doing something. That's the reality, you know, and we know, and we've been saying it, you know. So coming from him, it's, you know, quite, quite rich. But you see, first off, the order is directed to both ECG and the board. And it stays categorically. This order is directed to the Electricity Company of Ghana to the board members of ECG for the period of 1st August 2023 to 18th March 2024. So it's to the two of them. It's both to ECG and the board. Mm. There are three things, you know, they're basically holding them for. The first one is non-compliance with the, with the cash water for mechanism. Oh, yeah. 
The second thing is non-compliance with regulatory requests, which is the data that they have requested for. They're asking you to, you say you bought fuel. Give us details of the fuel you bought. You know what I'm saying? Aha. Uh -huh. We want to have details of the data of the various, you know, outages you have done over the period. Give us those data. You say you're running about 60-something accounts. You're supposed to run a certain number of accounts in order for the transparency in the cash waterfall mechanism to work. You're running more than those accounts that we have agreed on. Give us details of the account. Out of 67, you give them 34, the rest is not coming, you know. So th these are part of the reasons why. The third thing it says non-compliance with the Public Utility Regulatory Commission. This is a consumer service as under regulations 2020 LI2413, <coughs> which also categorically indicates that when PURC gives you, like, you have certain responsibilities towards the consumer. You're supposed to report to them three days before you do outages yeah. and all of that. You're not complying with all these basic details. So for that reason, we're asking you to pay this amount of money, you know, to the state. See, Rosalind, why we are here and why all the lies and why all the stress, like I said earlier, is karma. You come and tell us. You see, we keep telling the people of Ghana something. They, they, people, I, I get the feeling people are not paying attention. But every time they go, they come back to the same place we keep calling their attention to. When they started making noise about the fact that 630 transformers were blown, gone, or 630 transformers were overloaded, we indicated to the people of Ghana that this is not possible. It doesn't even make any sense. Mm. Why it doesn't make sense is because transformers do not overload overnight. It takes time. It mm -hmm. goes through a certain process. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So you can't just get up and say transformers have blown, you know, overnight. It, it just doesn't make any sense, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. We kept saying it. They said, oh, no, that's not the case. It is transformers that have blown. No problem. Today, the PURC is telling you that out of 640, out of 630, you know, transformers, what is actually overloaded is 89. Mm -hmm. What is overloaded is 89. They are telling you that 630 is overloaded. From the data they have submitted, it is only 89 that is overloaded. So if Do you know the funny thing? What? Do you know the funny thing? Out of, <laughs> out of 647 outages mm -hmm. that took place within that period, it is also, again, only three, only three outages that were related to the, what, to the Transformers. Three. Well, um, so with regards to what you're saying, yes. you're saying karma, karma, karma. Yes. What about mismanagement? No, we can agree. And I'm saying that, look, when I say karma, Karma plays itself in several ways. You have a minister who is in charge, Napo, right? Who supervised, to a certain extent, all the issues that transpired way back during the demonstrations and all of that for Dumso. He was there, he said he couldn't sleep, he couldn't. He's been given that opportunity today. Under his watch as the minister for energy, we've seen all these things that is happening. We've got Gritko right to the energy minister asking him to do something specifically about what is going on at ECG. Has he succeeded? No. So I'm saying karma because what you have planted is what is, it's like, it's almost as though everything they have held us to, they've been hit with it 10,000 times. And, and you're looking at the thing and you, you come to the conclusion that, look, we, have, we find ourselves in a situation where there's very little we can do, but we have to push and basically just buy time. Let me tell you something else that is, that is very, very interesting. Right. So When you're done with that, and I can... Pretty well. Okay. So, look, mm -hmm. between August to February, you're supposed to make some amount of money payments to ECG. ECG says, the government says, we can use a certain amount of money mm -hmm. to be able to buy fuel. So, according to ECG, they bought fuel. Ministry of Finance is supposed to pay that money. Back. Ministry of Finance actually instructed them to go ahead yes. and pre-finance. No problem. Yeah. Yeah. So, so go ahead, pre-finance. Ministry of Finance says they will do what? They will give that money back. Yeah. Are you aware? Which they haven't given. Until now. Yeah. So, you see, at the end of the day, you're having a government who is sitting down, who is playing with the lives of people. They know categorically that what they're doing is unacceptable. And then you have Kwashi tell us that Baumia says he's coming to do 2,000 megawatts of solar. That's important. Please, please. It's important. Baumia, oh, please, please, important. please, please, please. You're referring please. to me. I have to respond to you. It's important. But who it's, rhetoric. It's, it's rhetoric. It's rhetoric. It's rhetoric. Yeah. 2,000. 
It's rhetoric. Please. 2,000 megawatts of power. What was he doing the last seven years? What was he doing? He's not in charge. What was he doing the last seven years? He's not in charge. Please. You know, this is not in charge. He's in charge. He's it's a joke. The man is in charge of the economy. He's in charge. His in Excellency charge. Nanao Hininto tells you that the reason why His Excellency Nanao Kupado bought Baumia was because he, he's the economic guru. So if all of those indices are failing, mm -hmm. energy is a critical sector. If what we had left for you, if Kufu had left for us, we won't be here. Okay. Now says Adel Uba Ibrahim. Uh, let me welcome uh, Ni Ai Opari, who is representing Movement for Change. Hi, Ni. Yes, yeah. How are you? Very well, thank you. Yourself? I'm fine, thank you. I'm guessing. Sharp, so. Thank you. You too. I like your hair. Thank you. You get a lot of compliments for that, don't you? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. uh, I think the flats actually kept you a bit uh, in traffic. Yes. Yeah, yes. the flats are quite bad. Yes. So please, if you're out there, be very careful. Same. And do send in your messages to us as well. And don't forget to go to Franco Trading Enterprise for all your gadgets. Are you looking for mobile phones? Are you looking for tabletop fridges, television sets, CCTV cameras? Look no further because Franco Trading Enterprise has got all of that and even many more for you. We are running a promo up to 30% discount. So just download the app on your phone. Go to Google Play Store and download the app Franco Trading app. You can also pick the number on our screen. Please do not pick the number on Google. I am pleading with you. The scammers are there. The fraudsters are there. They will defraud you. Please make sure that you pick the number on our screen or you can go to the website www.franco trading enterprise franco trading enterprise sale phone for papa fieni yes. we are talking about you know the fine that has been you know given to the board members or former board members of ecg 5.9 million ghana cities and isaac of aj did explain to us the reason for this fine seven questions were asked you know with regards to what the money will be used for and said yes it will go to a certain account that will be used probably into the fuel and stuff like that so it will help and uh, we are asking this question is this fine good enough 5.9 million cities given to the board members. <laughs> right, so greetings to your viewers out there, uh, to my colleagues here. Um, I, I'd want to digress a little bit, because you see, um, I'd like to deal with the, the genesis of the problem, where this problem is coming from. Yeah. So the fine is actually inconsequential, if you ask me. Um, it's, it's not even a fine or an amount that is going to be punitive enough, because, I mean, for a board member, for board members of ECG to, to be fined $5.9 million, I mean, Ghana sees a bigger fine. I mean, it's... But let's look at the real issues here. I, I heard we were talking about the outages, mm. right? So I'm just hearing comparative analysis. We did this, it was worse in our time, we are better than you and all of that. This is what Ghanaians are tired of, right? For a very long time since the inception of this nation, Ghana, from 57, our most efficient power source is Akosombo Dam. And that was through the visionary leadership of Kwame Nkrumah. Now, at the time when the Akosombo Dam was built, the population of Ghana was somewhere around 5 million people, right? But his vision was that the population is definitely going to grow. The demand is going to rise, right? So let's build a plant that can actually sustain that for a number of years. Now, if you look at what has been done after Nkrumah, you realize people have lacked that initiative, that vision, to think further into the future. So you realize some people make noise about they've increased the power generation capacity and all of those things. What they don't tell us is that is most of those energy plants they brought run on light crude oil and gas which is natural mm -hmm. gas, which is relatively expensive mm -hmm. to run. So you can have the means of production of energy, right? It can be even more than your generation capacity. But your ability to run those plants become more expensive, so you're not able to run those things. So you ask yourself, if all of those interventions have been made, we have all these megawatts they've been talking about that they've added to our generation capacity. Yeah. You ask yourself, why are we still having power outages? And it seems, if you're going to be very honest with your objective analysis, whereas things progressively get worse. Mm -hmm. So you ask yourself, if you're having all of these technologies being input into the system, why are we still having the challenges? And why do they seem to be getting worse? Then again, brings <coughs> to my second point. The two main drivers of our economy for the past <coughs> two years have proven with their track record, they don't understand the governance process or the development process. So what they do here is they engage, yes, it's, uh, if, if, uh, if I explain more. What they do is they engage in certain projects, certain infrastructure developments, without understanding how those things plug mm. into the larger economic mainframe or, or, or schedule. What I mean is this. If you anticipate that your population is going to grow, you know you're having certain policies that would bring in increased demand on the energy sector. You're supposed to invest in other energy generation technologies. That's what you should look at. I, I saw you put in passing that um, 
the current vice president is going to put in some 2,000 megawatts of solar energy. I can tell you right now without going to the fact of the matter that that's not going to be feasible. Why so? Why? Yes. One of the main things about solar energy is your batteries, right? Now, you have to have lithium batteries to be able to hold all that power. Unfortunately, or fortunately, Ghana discovered lithium, but it has been privatized, as you know, right? So we don't even have a local factory that's going to produce those batteries. The cost to be able to hold 2,000 megawatts of solar power would run into millions, several hundreds of millions, if not billions. And at this, at this juncture, you know, we don't have the money to support such policies. So you ask yourself, if you're going to bring 2,000 megawatts of solar energy, well and good, but how are you going to meet the cost of the batteries? And you're going to look at the maintenance as well. So that's one thing that makes solar energy very expensive. A more efficient one will be looking at other technologies like nuclear energy or hydrogen energy. And that's what the Alan Chamantin is proposing in his GCP. That's, okay. Yes. For all the in in developmental projects we're looking at implementing, you have to have a stable, reliable, renewable, relatively cheaper energy source. And he's proposing that, <coughs> yes, it's about time we look at nuclear energy and hydrogen energy. These are how you can actually get into the international space and start competing. But I'm not hearing any solutions coming from my colleagues here. It's just comparative analysis that we did this better, we did this better, you're not able to do this. And these are the real issues. Mm. If you're promising jobs, you cannot do that away from giving us a comprehensive plan for energy. And like I'm saying, the Akosom Godam right now happens to be our most efficient energy plant. Yet still, some people are touted that they've added some megawatts for generation, um, um, I mean, uh, energy um, uh, production mm -hmm. uh, space and all of these things. But the real translation is what is lost here. And nothing will be accountability. So people are not able to take responsibilities for their actions. Who is responsible for the production of energy and energy-related issues here? Right. And af after those, um, um, all of those responsibilities have been delegated to certain people, who is making sure he's supervising to make sure those guys execute their tasks? That's not done. So someone is not able to do his job. He remains at post, and certain things go wrong. The best we can have is that they are slapping fines on these people. Then again, let's even imagine that the fines are, are paid off, right? You and I cannot say for certain where those monies are going to go to, if indeed they're going to be paid in the first place. Well, we've been told that there's an account allocated for that, and that account will be used to fuel this same ECG. So, you know, our plans will be fueled with this amount of money. So, so then again, you come back to what I mentioned earlier, that we're looking at using light crude oil and natural gas to, to power our plants, and that has not been feasible. Right. 5.9 million Ghana cities, how long will that run any of our energy generation plants in this country? For how long? What's the period? That cannot go beyond a week. So, I mean, what is this joke we're playing amongst ourselves here? It's time for serious business, mm. because governance is serious business. And unfortunately, certain people have had 32 long years mm. to deliver on their mandate. It's been promise after promise after promise, and they've not been able to deliver anything. And we're still here, the excuses. But like I'm saying, my dear, it's... Have our turn that's uh, everybody will have their turn. Uh, you've had your turn? Oh, no, but it's gone for longer. Oh, so I didn't catch you. <laughs> you want to, you want to. I mean, don't worry. I'm watching the time. Let him talk. Let him, don't worry, you, you talk a bit. I, 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 can, I can actually give some of my time away, but I, I can bet you it's yes. going to be comparative analysis. Yes, just quickly. We've not had no solutions coming mm. out. And that's what Ghanaians are looking for right now. Okay. Solutions. How do we get out of where we are in here right now? Okay. And you see, I'm saying you cannot expect the same people who put us in this problem who are neck deep in this situation to right. get us out of it. Okay. And that's why there's a time I'm, I'm pushing this message out there for the youth of Ghana particularly. If your future is really <coughs> important for you, it's about time that we take a turn in our political matters. Two drivers have been in the driver's seat for 32 long years, have not been able to deliver on any of their promises, particularly with this energy situation. This is a new chapter in Ghana's democracy. So we should give what, it to the it? movement for change. I, I wish you just let me wrap up. <laughs> let him wrap up. Quickly let him wrap up. Don't worry, you have time. You don't want to hear the don't movement worry. for change. Yeah. But yes, this, this, this is a time, this is a call to all Ghanaian youth out there. I'm saying we've gone through the cycle of blame games and, and apportioning blames and all of that, skipping responsibilities. But here's a time if your future matters to you so much and you're willing and ready to make sure we rescue and rebuild Ghana, the opportunity is now to join the movement for change. Let us make all of these things happen. Yeah. Time for excuses long gone. Let's get to the All world. right, Nia, thank you very thank much. You very I, I think what it is is that every every time, you know, we once it's election year and we come your way, 
obviously everybody will use the platform to market themselves. Yeah, but that watching the time as well. So, Pardon? Yeah. I'm saying watching the time as well. So. No, you, 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 okay. you, you stopped. Stop. Anyway, <laughs> let me quickly read some messages <laughs> coming in. Honorable Akisimis says, sometimes it's better to keep mute. MPP has no shame. How can your delivery <clears> tracker uh, in 2018 produce 18,000 completed jobs and a performance tracker in 2024 rather produce 13,000 completed jobs? A difference of 5,000 short fall. See how God is exposing MPP lies big time and rather vindicating JDM up. We are saying that your performance tracker is simply collecting percentages without accompanying data. <laughs> Every good tracker has data linked to it so that it automatically changes when new data is added. This is how performance dashboards get built to track performance over time. MPP Mukasaduto ah. Honorable Akis Misefi Bekwail. Hassan C. says, Zenu from Zenu Central says, Good morning to you all. Almost eight years in power there in the Naiku Fado and Baumia government cannot go out there and bring any energy plant to add to what JDM has bequeathed to them, which Nanado called a bad deal in 2016. But just for him to relocate the bad plant to Kwesi and rename it for his pity, politicizing uh, is worrying. Even with all, is it Kwesi or Kumasi? You're trying to say Kumasi. Okay, Kumasi. Even with all this plant that has been handed over to Nanado, he still fails to mention the light 247. What an incompetence. As for Napo, the least said about him, the better. The decision of this government to jail the former Maslok boss can only be described as political vindictiveness rather than fighting corruption. If this government indeed wants to fight corruption and money laundering, Honorable Cecilia Abunada Park, and many other appointees of this government would not have been walking freely and even given platforms to contest the elections. <laughs> no amount of these political gymnastics will prevent Ghanaians from kicking them out of office. The future of Ghana is in shambles. Honorable Sipa, uh, Siba Al Hassan Zungo Kokos coordinator says, Oh, you didn't say anything. Oh, oh said Madam Host, okay. So, Madam Host, I have uh, some four harmless questions to ask the MPP in respect to the plant that is sent to Kumasi. Number one, where is the country of origin of the plant? Two, what are the terms and conditions of the plant? Three, what is the cost of the plant? Four, when was the plant brought into the country? That's coming from the Honorable Sipa Al Hassan. Okay. Honorable, as. Uh, I, could you have a response to that? Uh, to, to the question that he asked. Well, I suppose these were... The, yeah, these the, are the, very the, technical, the, right? The, 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 the plan that was sent to Kumasi. Yes. I mean, the, uh, it's, were, it's, more, were, it's more technical. Before, yes, you know, it's more technical. So I can't, I can't, I quickly cannot answer that to that. Good morning to you, Paul. They just... Uh, in certain parts of Accra, a major issue that is affecting the lives and livelihood of residents in the city. The root causes of power outages, including inadequate supply, electricity theft, mismanagement, and corruption, must be addressed to improve the reliability of the electricity supply in Accra. The government of Ghana must take de uh, decisive action to invest in the country's power infrastructure, crack down on illegal connections, improve coordination and communication, and hold those responsible for mismanagement and corruption accountable. Only through these measures can the issue of power outages in Accra be effectively addressed and residents can enjoy reliable and uninterrupted access to electricity. Aaron Bebako Kokomisa. Good morning, Madam Host. Okay, you're saying good morning, Rosalind. That's fine. May God bless you so much. I like the way you are doing journalism work. Ross, do you know that NPP most 419 party ever in this world? Clueless governance, notorious leadership style, incompetent party, <coughs> NPP, mismanagement, everything in Ghana. Rose, uh, Say to NPP greeting to incoming uh, <coughs> President John Romani Mahama and incoming MP Amasaman. Amasaman, okay. Oh, oh yeah, Amasaman. Sedem Apenyo, my name is Francis Arthur Amasaman. All right, good morning, Roslyn. Respectfully, NDC is certainly not an option for our energy sector crisis. We, the youth, have not forgotten ordeal. the ordeal uh, they put us through. From 2012 to 2016, Dr. Baumia is the answer to the Ghanaian youth. Mesha Kasante from Amasaman says, the President Mahama is the only hope for Ghanaians in this difficult time. So let's all come together as one people and vote for him massively come December 7th, 24 hour economy a year ad Okay. Good morning, Obapa Roslin. Oh, I like this name. Thank you very much. <laughs> this government has infected the institution with lies. Dr. Zakaria uh, 
four versus one Baumia said we are building an airport to you while nothing is going on at Capos. We'll build a sky train. We have arrested the dollar, etc. Now ECG is now ECG is also lying and asked to pay fine. Oh Ghana, may God help us. Solomon Zenu, Martin Luther, Al Hassan Hamza from Pick Farm says, Good morning, Rosalind. In fact, I'm deeply sad this morning and my heart bleeds for this nation. Where did we go wrong? As a matter of agency, the ECG boss should be resigning this morning if only he has shame in him. NPP as a political party is full of scammers and nothing else. We are where we are as a nation simply because of the arrogant postures of functionaries of this government. They always feel they know it all, but know nothing. Today, the president is in Kumasi to commission the Ameri plant, which has become the game changer for the good people of Kumasi. Interesting, the name Ameri has been changed to Kumasi One Energy Plant just to lie to the good people of Kumasi for it to look like the president has brought in something new. Truth be told, the future of this country under this wicked super incompetent government is pregnant and hopeless. God have mercy. Roslyn, um... This one is from Kweku. Kwe, okay, so Rosalind, Kweku Kwashi is one of the persons who don't know what is happening in Ghana. The power outages are all over. In Asaman Kese, power, power goes off every six hours. Tell him to stop defending the indefensible. It makes us more angry and angry. I don't know who crafted this communication for MPP that Baumia is not in charge and is being echoed by party communicators, government officials, etc. Look at this logic. Ekufuado is the president. He wants Baumia to win, and yet Baumia's ideas that will ease the pressure of the economy, he and Anado will not uh, allow Baumia to implement them. Industries have a ta flat tax rate, tax holiday, two thousand solar power, etc. Please tell Kweku that they should convince voters that Nanado will not allow Baumia to cancel e-levy and many other taxes choking us knowing that Baumia can ride on the back of that to win or else stop this he is not in charge thing or stop this is not in charge thing if he is not who is an opposition vice president in government or what sorry for the NPP good morning dear the NPP man uh, do not know what to say about ECG bad deal Moro from Adringano. Good morning to you and your panelists, especially member, especially my good MPP eloquent communicator. That's way cool. Yeah. And NDC's Green Book, page 106, Kinsan Poprang Road has been captured as constructed rules, but it was a lie. What, what is the NDC talking about? NDC should not compare the performance tracker to the Green Book. The performance tracker is a living entity and it's a subject to update. Green Book is just a dead goat. Arresting and jailing mood activated. All the thieves under NDC administration will see their smoothness level. Master planner, Junior Kintam. Okay, I have a lot of messages. I think I'll put a hold to the messages. And uh, Kweku, you wanted to say something about, you know, the AC. You have, you've written a lot. So let me give you the opportunity to go ahead. Yes. Um, I think, first of all, let's again get it um, very clear. And he was talking about the fact that, um, you know, PURC said that, um, the, the power out is not due to transformers. Indeed, if the PRC is saying that, we expect the PRC to tell us what's causing the problem then. Mm. Because we're extracting information from ECG. So it should be possible for PURC to say it's not transformers, but it's ABC. I think so uh, PURC that. did speak about that in but the past. We haven't heard that. We have. So um, well, I haven't heard what, what, what they said. So a month what's... ago, a month ago, when you know this whole thing came up, PRC did state categorically that ECG was owing the IPPs. And this was one of the biggest reasons why we're facing this. They did speak about the cash waterfall system where they said that ECG ought to pay these IPPs. Piece. ECG had made a certain amount of money, over 40 million Ghana cities, that they had to pay the IPPs. However, they did not pay the IPPs. In response, what ECG rather said was that the city depreciation is affecting their uh, revenue, and so it's very difficult for them to pay the IPPs. They did mention that finance ministry had gone ahead to uh, tell them or given them an instruction that they should go ahead and pre-finance full. So they were actually down and we're waiting for you know finance ministry to give them the money so they did talk about it so so granted granted you know and that's that's the re that's, that's the very reason why the bold solution of dr bahman about me to provide 2000 megawatts kind of, of solar energy cannot be overlooked it's very important i keep telling you about a country leveraging what it has what it has we've got energy we've got solar we've got so much of it why are we going up and down chasing mm. what we don't have control over we all know that the full economy in this world 
is not controlled by Ghana. Even though we are doing oil here, we don't control it. You understand me? Exactly. So it's important we put our energies and our focus on where we can get the best value. And solar is the place to go. And I hear my friend talking about, 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 about nuclear. <laughs> you understand me? You don't, have, you don't have control over the things or you need to put into nuclear energy. You have no control over that. We have control, not control, we have abundance of energy, abundance of solar. We must tap into it. And that's what Baumia keeps talking about, that we should tap in there and make sure that our power and all those issues you know, are, 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 handled, are handled well. Otherwise, we'll keep going up and, and down, down like with that. it. So, as a because Ghanaian, you don't control the resources in there. As a Ghanaian, if I'm a viewer right? and I'm watching, my question to you will be that Dr. Mahmoud Baumia is still at post. Mm -hmm. Dr. Mahmoud Baumia's party is the governance right yes. now. How long do we have to wait before he gives us this 2,000 power? Well, first of all, I think you understand that, as I said, he's not in charge. It's a difference between being number one and being number two. So he can do anything there's somebody, about it. We have to wait till we vote for him before somebody, he There's somebody him. in charge who's executing his vision. But his vision... And, and his only, the, the, the role of the vice president is basically to advise. The buck stops the president. Mm. Now, Rosalind, remember somewhere, in, somewhere last year, about 90 NPs or so actually had a press conference mm. and were calling for the resignation of the then finance minister. Mm -hmm. If these MPs actually believed that Dr. Baumia was in charge of the economy and had been given the economy to handle, why were they calling for the, uh, you know, for, for Ken O'Fire to resign? Why that? These are members of parliament. They know what's happening in the country, <laughs> okay? And so for them to actually come out and say that, no, let the, you know, finance minister resign, you know, it shows that Dr. Baumia hadn't been given the economy to handle. Let me ask you this line. again. Uh, let me ask you this again. I mean, what you're saying, I'm going to bring you back to my mm -hmm. question. Governance is a collaborative work. Yes. We know that it's, it doesn't work in isolation. Mm -hmm. And as far as Ghanaians are concerned, we were presented with Dr. Mahmoud Baumia as a messiah. If Dr. Mahmoud Baumia today is telling us that he voted into power, I will do this to solve problems, power outage problems, and we are currently going through power outage problem, and he's still in power as the second person, yes. you know, yes. and governance is a collaborative work. Why is the government not listening to what Dr. Ba Mahmoud Baumia is saying for us to fix the problem, but rather wait till 10 months or what, nine, how many months do we have? Eight months. Eight months. Rather wait for eight months before <laughs> we come and fix the problem. Yes, I, I, I understand you, but uh, of course, when it comes to, say, solar power, for example, it won't take a matter of just months to create 2,000 megawatts of solar power. And so I'm sure this is a conversation that So you can start one. now? Of course, I, I agree with you. I, 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 and the plans towards that is not just a matter of waiting to be elected. The plans are in place. And so as of now, we have um, about, what, is it 50 or maybe 37 megawatts of um, solar already in place? So it's been done. If you go to Bui Power, it's been done there. So it's not as if something that um, is, has been discussed. It's been acknowledged, it's been done. Solar is being you know, generated. Um, however, what Dr. Baumia is saying that when I come into office, I'm going to make it much, much bigger. And so all this dependency on, you know, on fuel. So until he's in office, until he's president, as <coughs> vice president, he'll make it bigger. And I'm saying that it, it won't take a matter of months to get to 2,000 megawatts. It takes oh. time to plan that. But the plan is already in place. In the sense that we have already, we're already given solar, you know, solar power, solar energy. You know, it's, it's part of the mix already. It's there. You understand me? And so once he comes into office, he'll make sure it's much, much expanded. That's the whole idea. Okay. All right? Yeah. Um, so clearly, clearly being, being number two is not being number one. You are there to help the vision of somebody, and the back stops with that person. It's but, advisory. But we are going through a advice. power crisis, mm -hmm. okay? You claim you have the solution, it voted to power, and you are still in power. Why don't you solve it? So that you, you use it to say that when I was in power and this happened, I solved it. So give me the opportunity yeah, there again. Are, there are many things that have been solved when, you know, as, 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 as a vice president. There are many things that Baumia has led to, to, to solve. For example, I gave you the, the, you mentioned the gold for oil, for example. That has helped stabilize our currency. It's a very simple thing. So we have gold, and I say that a, a, a nation must leverage on its resources. So, so he's a problem so solver. He said to, to, to lead is to solve. So he can, he can let me, solve. Let me just give you an example of the gold for oil. Mm. Say that, you know, you, you, have, you have cassava you sell, and I've got plantain, all right? Um, this friend of mine has got, he sells pepe. Now, he's saying that before I come and buy a cassava, I should come and exchange my plantain with his pepe. 
and bring that to you. Mm, the butter trade, butter trade, butter trade. So it's butter, you understand mm, me? Butter. So the point I'm making is that we don't control the pepper. We don't control the dollar. So we leverage on what we have. So that if I have, say, a, 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 a basket full of plantain, that I say, you know what, in, 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 in pepper terms, it's like two, two um, longer. And you also say that your, your, your cassava, you've got maybe four baskets. In, in those terms, you say, um, what, uh, four, four longer, all right? So now the, the pepper or the dollar becomes reference point and we just exchange so that going through him. Is butter. So that person is cut out. It's is, very important. And that idea was brought in by the Good. So he's a problem solver. Of course a problem solver. So he solver. should solve the we problem now. He should solve the ECG it, it, it problem has, now. Started, but he once, has to solve it now. Once, once he starts post office, and he can do he it, he can provide 2,000 megawatts, every, he should provide it now. Every, That's all Every person needs. who seeks to lead must have his own vision. And that is his vision. Okay. For now, he's supporting somebody, advising somebody, okay. and the backstop to that person should they advise or not. All right. Adel. Rosalind, on one breath, he's not in charge. On the other breath, he has already started doing solar. On one breath, he's not in charge. On the other breath, he's in charge of digitization. On one breath, he's not in charge. On the other breath, Nana Kufuado wants him to be president. What is all this child's play? What is all this, you know, what's that? Listen. You were brought in as number two. You're not even a driver's mate. You're a co-driver. When the president is not in, you take charge. The speaker, please, please, please. The speaker of parliament does not even call himself a co-driver. He does not call himself a mate. I'm a co-driver. Can you, can you have some... I don't come to you, know, please. Like, yeah. <laughs> listen. Well, who has had his time, don't worry. Yeah, yeah. Listen. Whether we like it or not, His Excellency the Vice President has failed. Take it. Or leave it. You can sleep in whatever ECG you want has to believe it. to do with the vice president. Who said? Let's talk about what is happening with regards to ECG. What, what go? I'm, I'm, I'm entering into the conversation mm. with you. I'm saying that. When the time of Doomsaw came, was Nana, was his excellency John Romain Mahama at ECG? Why, why are we so dishonest? Like, why, why do you look in the cameras and, and lie? Like, you lie in your teeth and you're okay with it. So it is okay if it's John Mahama who is, who is the president. And, and ECG is going through problems. It's John Mahama. See, then me, and, and you know, that's the worst part. You see, this is one big family, you know? Like, right. yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Family oh, yeah, it's one big family. You, you that, that, no, 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 I'll bring you. Yeah. No, 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 listen. I, 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 listen, I, 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 it's, can, you, can I, can I, can I just have my, when you're speaking, when you're speaking, when you're speaking, when you're speaking I'm still in here. Let me, oh, I'm saying. not a family anymore. Surprise. Rosalind, so Rosalind, no problem. Your time is I mean, so the people of Ghana will decide whether I'm arrogant or not. I'm saying that this is one big family. Why? When did Alan realize that Nana Kufuadu and Baumia and all these people that are sitting there, mm. sebi sebi, don't merit this country? When did he realize that? Right. He says, oh, NDC, um, the NDC MPP, uh, 32 years. Where is Alan from? The 32 years, where was Alan from? Where was Alan? Alan was, was sitting in, in room. Was Alan not part of the MPP? Was he not part of the 16 years of, of governance? So Alan is the one placed in. Can you please? Can you please? Can you please? What? You don't decide what I say. You you not you not you don't decide what I say. You sit here. You sit here, please. Let him make his point, please. Why is it that? When I, why is it that when I have? I don't make your point and let's go, please. Listen, I'm saying that, I'm saying that. This is basic. Take it or leave it. The people of Ghana are watching. They're taking a decision whether you like it or not. I'm saying there was a time when somebody was sitting on the chair. You said he's incompetent. You said he didn't deserve it. Alan said John Mahama didn't deserve it. You come to power. Alan has been given the Ministry of Trade and Industry. How many factories has he built? What is happening to Commercial Factory? What is happening to it? You're building 1D1F. You know you're going to need energy. Listen to this, oh. Alan is part of cabinet. He sits here and says, oh, we need to expand. And Nkrumah did expansion. I'll come to that. Ex Nkrumah did and he planned ahead and he gave you extra. Okay, no problem. You have Alan, about two minutes. No problem. Alan, the visionary, he's in charge. We're giving him trade ministry. Okay. He should know that if he's setting up factories, he would need energy. What did he do with the energy ministry? What collaboration did they have? What plan did they have in order to make sure that his factories come to play? 
What did he do? Good question. You sit, you sit here and then you wait. After seven years, when we've been telling you, Alan, and we've been telling all the people of Ghana that Nana Akufuado is corrupt, that His Excellency Elijah Bahamid, Mahmoud Bahamid is corrupt, what, what, that what, these people... What, is this an allegation, though? Fair, fair enough, fair an enough, fair enough. Because you don't have these, to people, to... these people are thronging us into hell. You sit down and watch Nanado rip us off. You sit down and watch Bahamia rip us off. You sit down and watch all these people rip, rip us off. off. How didn't they rip us off? How didn't they do it? How didn't do it? I'm asking you. But, 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 but if somebody, I'll give you. Hey, I'll, somebody listen, listen, listen. You need to have I'll give you. I'll that. give you two examples. Yes. I'll give you two examples. First one is the National Cathedral. Why are all the pastors leaving? You put a hundred million dollars in that project with no foundation. But, but to it is a rip off. It, it is a rip off, Rosalind. Hundred million doesn't do foundation. It's a rip off. That is one. Let me give you a second example. Second example is His Excellency taking um, the, 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 the what you call now let do during COVID when they gave $4 million to go and construct a holding center in Nalergu, in the vice president constituency, not a brick has been placed on the floor. Skytrain, $2 million, gone, not a brick. What do you call it? Um, this recent one we were talking about, uh, which is the issue of uh, the, the, Palugu, the Palugu Dam, $12 million, gone. Is that not a rip-off? So you are telling me that the potholes, I'm saying, the $12 million Ghana oh, yeah, that we are supposed you, to bring the potholes that you, we have you, in the potholes. I am saying that, I am saying that, when they have no legs to stand on, then they say, oh, one is better now. Rosling, in conclusion, he says, NDC MPP better. One says, I'm better, and one says, on what basis are you arguing? You're arguing on the basis of the fact that you believe that Alan is better. It's always about someone who's better. But that's what you all do. I'm saying that. So that, so, that, so that is why I'm saying that. That argument is moot. Because at the end of the day, you are praying and hoping that Alan should be voted for. Because Nana Akufuado and Baumia, for which the same party is where you're coming from, are corrupt. So it's one house, no problem. So one is corrupt. You're saying take him out because we are. And I'm saying that when you come into power today and you're given the mandate, you want to do better. So when you say, oh, I want to do, I want to do, uh, uh, what do you call it, nuclear. So you want to do nuclear because for you, you believe nuclear is way, way better than doing solar or doing what John Roman Muhammad did. In any case, it is okay for Nkrumah to say, let me think ahead, add extra capacity, and it's fine. He's a visionary leader. But when John Roman Muhammad adds extra capacity with the plans to export in, two, in 2018 to be able to export 300 megawatts extra in order to get USD into the country, John Romani Mahama is not a visionary leader. Then you come and you meet that extra capacity. You grow into that capacity without adding. Look, when I open their performance tracker, hey, let me tell you. No, no, no. I'm coming, I'm coming. How am I contradicting? Your time is up, though. Your time is up. I know your time is up. I gave it to you. I even gave you five minutes. Let them decide. Let the people decide. I don't be in power. No problem. Let the people decide. I have said this. I'm going to sit on the list and just throw your hands about. One of the things I stand on is integrity. Right. And I have thrown this challenge out there. There's nobody who can bring any single issue against the man Alan John Traumatic in his private and professional lives. It's out there. They should do it. It's a challenge, right? That's the integrity we're working with. Now, he asked why did Alan stay in power all this while and never left. You see, then again, that's one of the things that made me respect the man's vision. Mm. Now, if Alan had left in the first term, knowing that the party was corrupt... Now, mind you, he has left before. So let me just... I have two minutes, right? Uh, yeah, please go ahead. Good, right. So, Alan leaves the first time in 2008, thereabouts, mm -hmm. and he says, this party was built on certain principles. And since those principles have been diverged from, I cannot stay in this, so he leaves. Right, yes. Now, they come back and then render some apologies and say, no, we didn't do this right. Now, he gives a second chance. He says, okay, let bygones be bygones. Let's work towards right. the future. Now, he gets back in there and realizes all the apologies that were made were not sincere. Mm -hmm. Now, the problems that he left on or left for were still prevalent and they were actually getting worse. Now, he does the honorable thing and says, no, on integrity, I cannot stay within this, this space, so I leave. But look at it. If he had left in the first term, projects like the AF, the African Continental Free Trade Agreement would not have materialized. Mm. So he says, even though this space is not right, let me lay the foundations on which we can build going into the future. If he had left in his first term, Rosen, projects like the car assembly manufacturing plants we have in Ghana today would not have materialized. Mm. So he says, yes, playing the, the vision... Volkswagen. Exactly. Okay. So he says, playing the visionary game, yes, this is not a good space, but since I am in that space right now, let me lay the foundations that are right, and then when those things are set, yes, you can take off. So now, with all the things he has put in place, he has left. He says, if given the mandate now, we can build off what I've already started. Now, the reason why I'm comparing MPP and NDC, and my brother doesn't understand where the uh, comparison is coming from, is this. 
You have been in the driver's seat to run this for 32 years. So we are comparing your achievements, your track record. That's what we are comparing. Alan, yes, you can compare his track record as trade minister, but he has never been in the driver's seat. Now he's saying, so what do you go by um, 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 compare, comparing here? Mm. He's saying, even as trade minister, I have done X and X and X. These are the processes. Let's compare those. You speak about JDM being visionary because he added some megawatts. Again, Rosalind, this is to buttress my point, that they don't understand the development process. Mm -hmm. It does not matter how many megawatts of energy you've added to the mix if you cannot fire on those cylinders. It's useless. You can have a very high generation capacity, but if you're not able to produce on those, how, what, what's the use? It's not just about having megawatts the power, the, the power generation mix. No, but you're saying it has to be efficient, renewable, and relatively affordable. Okay. Lee. But if your plants are all running on light crude oil and natural gas, which we cannot even afford, if you have all those plants sitting there, we cannot <coughs> run them. What's the point of bringing them in? Here? Right. Okay. So the difference here is that Inkuma's vision was that he actually was looking at how we can get relatively cheaper renewable energy sources. That's why, apart from that cost from Bodam, he was looking at investing in nuclear energy. Okay, yeah. great. All right, and, and don't forget to go to Franco Trading Enterprise to get all your gadgets. Are you looking for mobile phones, tabletop fridges, air conditioners, uh, CCTV cameras? And then look no further, because we have all of that and even many more. We are running a promo up to 30% discount. Just visit any of our offices or download the app on your phone. It is Franco Trading app. Go to Google Play Store and download the app. Please do not pick our numbers from Google, but rather pick the number on the screen right now that is the number to call us on or just visit our website www.francotradingenterprise franco trading enterprise still phone papa pair fee let's move on to our next topic and th that will be very brief because we don't have much time i'm talking about madame sedina tamakloa tionu who has been jailed in absentia of 10 years for causing financial loss of 90 million ghana cities to the state this actually happened yesterday she's a former boss of of a mass lock and uh, her assistant actually also the head of operations has been jailed for five years we've gotten a lot of reactions from people but i want reactions from my guests today as well so quickly let me start this with you people say that you are fighting corruption so finally something is being done about it but people are also asking certain questions madam cecilia dapa all these people are still walking on the streets of accra um well thank you i think that um it's important we understand that as um, public officers, if you're given the mandate or the, the opportunity to serve your people, it's important we serve with such diligence. And so um, this issue to do with Madam Sedina and mass talk is rather unfortunate. But that also underscores what the NPP has been seeing every time about how, the, how corrupt the uh, Muhammad administration had been. There were several instances, all right? So far, there's only one has been able to go through the process and, and conclude it. Um, a lot of monies were spent, you know, that were not supposed to be spent. And that, that shouldn't happen at all. And I think that um, clearly the law is working. We're allowing the law to work. And, 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 and people, people should respect those for whom they've been put there to serve, okay? Um, I, I, I mentioned that, look, there were there are several issues to do with NDC and the Mahama. We had issues of bus branding, we have Jida, we had Sada, a, a load of them, a load of them. And so this underscores the fact that the NDC remains the most corrupt party we have had in this country. Okay? So um, for me, it's, it's in the right direction. The, you know, the, 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 the court was doing its work. And it, this actually started somewhere in 2019. Right? And it's gone on for how many years? It's gone on for, for five years. And so if you're talking of um, other cases, these are just new cases that have been investigated. It takes time to you know, establish some of these things. All right? And as you understand that under Ekufado, it's given the space to the OSP to do its work without interference. I can tell you, I can tell you for a fact that under an NDC government, this OSP will have no chance of it. Really? They will have no chance to operate. We saw the OSP actually have a press conference where he did say, not us, that there's interference in his work. Oh, well... No, not us. Not, I mean, not, I mean, it wasn't somebody else who said yeah, it. I mean, he I mean, said it. Certainly. I mean, you are going after people and some will be happy. You understand me? So naturally, they may, they may fight back. No, it All wasn't right? natural. He said the government... Naturally, they may he, fight back. It wasn't the people. It wasn't the individuals. He said the government but was not allowing him to do his job. The OSP is being empowered to do his work. Nobody's impeding him. Let me tell you, so what he said the, work, the work that the OSP is doing today, 
or the work that Matamidu was doing as OSP was the same work that Matamidu was doing when he was Attorney General. The same work exposing the NDC, but they put him off. So how do you trust that when an NDC government comes into office again, they would allow the OSP to work? It would never happen. Mm. You know, NDC will not sit down for you to touch their own. It will never happen. You know, um, they won't. under this government, let's look at Madam Cecilia Dapa, mm -hmm. where, you know, whenever OSP tries to seize her gadgets, he's, he's actually uh, been told to release her things for her. Her monies that were seized, her properties that were seized, so that investigation could go on. OSP was instructed to release them to her. And so that is how OSP came out to tell us that, I am not being allowed to do my job. And so in, in the governance, when it's for opposition, yes, you can do your job. But when it's for us, you can't do your job. O OSP was being directed by the courts. Okay. It wasn't being directed by a government. Okay. Which is release her patterns for her. It was being directed by a court. Mm. The same court that has given its ruling to, to, to uh, Madam Sidna. You understand me? So the court was doing its work. So it's not, it's not, it's not, a government has said that gave his things to her. Mm. The OSP was doing, sorry, the courts had ordered the OSP. And he had, he had to comply. Okay. Of course, he's also a lawyer. He's a lawyer. And he might have different views of why the court is But why, why is court actually instructing OSP? Why can't court allow OSP to do his job? No, the point is that it must go, the OSP goes through a court process. The OSP by itself doesn't get up and say, I'm, 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 I'm charging you, I'm dealing you. It goes to court. And so when it goes to the court, people must argue the issue out. Right? And depending on what issues are put on the table, the court will decide do A or do B. And the court ordered him rightly to return the, 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 the stuff that belongs to Bram Dapa to, to her. Okay. And, so, and so clearly I'm saying that under an NDC government, there's no way courts will be fought. There's no way OSP will ever have the chance to operate. The NDC, I can tell you, will not sit down for you to touch their own. Here. But we haven't and, seen any MPP touched either. Well, we have seen, we have seen OSP go after, after, after Madame, Madame Dapa. And what happened? Well, it's, it's ongoing. But OSP has told us it's that. It's ongoing. No, OSP has told us it's, that it is he's ongoing. not allowed to do his it is, job. No, the fact that a court orders you properly so doesn't mean that you're not doing your job. All right. We, we are Use here. The process. This is Ghana. We are here. Use the process. All right. And so we, we have shown that we are fighting corruption. Okay. Okay? Let me, I'm sorry, Dale. Rosalind, the, one, of, one of the easiest things anyone can do is to look to his neighbor's house and say, my neighbor's son is a criminal. And they shout about it and go everywhere and make all the noise about it. But when his son is found in the same situation, he says, oh, my buddy wants to my, my son, you know. In the eyes of justice, fairness is required. That is why the symbol is a weighing balance. You know, there has to be fairness, you know? So in the NDC, His Excellency John Dumani Maham, he was that one person, and, and any time I talk about this, I okay. feel, I just, I just love the man. Listen, this is a man that decided at a point in time, because someone made a statement, an intention, okay, made a statement, an intention. If I had a million dollar, mm -hmm. <laughs> I would quit politics. The man said, you're not going to have a million dollar under my watch. Go home. She didn't touch the one million dollar. She didn't make the one million dollar. She said, if I made a million dollar, this is a man who was trying to curb corruption from the intention stage. Unless he doesn't hear the intention. He was curbing corruption from the intention stage. This is a man that arrested his own and prosecuted. Jifatibo, pay those monies back before she died. I said, who? Please. Who have you? Can you please? Abu Gapiloa. Who have you? Can you? Can you, why are you, why are you, why are you guys like that? You talk about arrogance and all of that, and then I'm sitting here. I don't, I don't make your point, don't worry. No, but it's unacceptable. Just make your point. Please, allow him. Listen, I'm saying this is a man that solved the problem from the intention stage. You've had Kwekwaji Maimenu, your health minister, come sit in a committee and admit to causing financial loss to the state. Mm, I remember that. Well, listen, listen COVID, to this. COVID. COVID. Yeah. Listen. The man says, admit. <laughs> you know, in, in law, when, when you admit this, okay, we'll reduce your sentence, yeah. you know? He says, admit. He's not fighting it. He's not saying, I didn't do it. He's not saying, don't take me to court. He's not in court to fight it. 
who has been arrested? Has he been prosecuted? Mm. You sit here and you talk about what? And and, and, and now we are fighting corruption. Yeah, in any case, the, please. Okay. In any case, please. 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 there is no arrogance here. Please let him make his point. Quite please. Adele, please make your point. Uh, it's, it's, I can understand. Quick. But let's go on. Listen, listen. You want to make a case. There is a reason why we say listen to both sides. You don't jail people without listening to them. There's a reason why we say, you know, you, 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 to, 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 the, to the extent of, you know, beyond every reasonable doubt when you're dealing with cases of crime. You need to go beyond every reasonable doubt. Why? Because it will be a major issue to jail an innocent person. The NDC would not support anybody that is involved in any form of crime. John Domani Muhammad didn't support it. He didn't even tap them back. No. He dealt with it when he had to. You know what I'm saying? So there is no one under John Romani Mahama who has committed any crime who should be let off the hook. I don't subscribe to that. In fact, even if anybody in the NDC said that the woman stole it, but let her go, I'll say jail her. Because that is what ought to be done. But do you think she stole it? I'm coming. I'm bringing you. So you take the woman to court. She says, unfortunately, she was ill. So she asked for the opportunity to go for treatment. The court granted her that opportunity to go for treatment. She goes for treatment. Unfortunately, things are not working out within the time frame she's supposed to come back. What the court is supposed to do is give, and the judges and the lawyers kept going and asking the court to give them extension because she's still under treatment. She's going through. There are occasions where we've had people even jailed. Listen, no, jailed. They are in jail. And they say, oh, they are not well. Chikata. He was brought out of jail by Kufu. Why? Because he was ill. So we're saying that the, 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 the situation was so much that she was not well. Give her an opportunity. Give her a word. Give her a say in court. You say no. You go ahead and you try the case without listening to her. And then you, you sentence her to 10 years. No, in any case, look, on any day, if that woman was there in court, and you listened to her, and you, she, she gave her evidence, and the court decided that after listening to you and giving your evidence, what if she has other information that would tell that what you have brought against me isn't what is? Mm. That is why she has to be listened to. That is why witnesses would have to be brought, so we can have a conversation. Then you try her in her absence, ill outside looking for treatment, and then you, you sentence her to 10 years in jail. Do you know the precedences? Yeah, yeah, don't worry, it's fine. You, you know the precedences they are setting up? They're telling us that tomorrow, His Excellency John Romani, His Excellency Nana Kufuado, or Baumia, when they leave power, the NDC can decide to, you know, go ahead and do an arrest and Is say, that what you're going to do? I'm, I'm just saying, I'm saying you're setting a precedence. You can, you can arrest His Excellency Nana Kufuado. And then he says, Oh, I'm not well. So, well, no problem. You can't travel to the UK. You can go to UGMC. You get police guards to be sitting by you. And then we, we try him in absentia and then jail him to, to for 10 years. I'm just telling you. Okay. This is what you keep doing. You see, in your haste, in your haste, to try to do something, because it's been seven years, Rosalind. The kind of corruption you said John Romani Mahama has done, and in seven years, you're struggling to put people, in fact, John Romani Mahama, we were expecting you to be in jail by now. The man is walking free. So we're saying that at the end of the day, you have done what it is that you want to do, but let them know and let them remember, tomorrow is pregnant. Okay. Me, are you? Yes, ma'am. Um, at, at times like this, I wish I could just change the subject and talk about more productive yeah, things. Yeah, but yes. unfortunately, this is the topic. Exactly, <laughs> yes. But you see, um, I, I find it interesting when I, I see issues concerning um, causing financial loss to the state, yes. That um, what, one thing I know about the governance structure is before government makes any payment from the Ministry of Finance, there's a long paper trail. Yeah. Right. So I don't see how an individual or two take the responsibility or the blame for causing financial loss to the state. Because like I'm saying, not an individual can do this. Yes, certain people will have the final authority and all of that, but certain people, checks and balances have been put in that long procurement line, as if you're procuring stuff, yes. So it's, it's interesting how it's just a few people always fall victim to that charge, causing financial loss to the state. And the long list of other people who would have been involved or complicit in that activity walk free. It's very worrying for me. Now, we have to understand government is in three arms. That's yeah. the thing. It's the executive, the legislature, mm -hmm. and the judiciary. Mm -hmm. So anything that the courts do under whichever administration is seen to be under the third arm of government. So that is government at play. You cannot divulge that from government and say the courts are not the government. They are actually representative of that government administration. That's one thing we should get. 
Um, let me just chip this thing in here before, before I continue. I have, I'm of the opinion that the two arms of government are democratic. The third one is not necessarily so. The executive is elected by the people. Yeah. The legislature is elected by the people. Mm -hmm. But the judiciary is not elected by the people. It's appointed. Exactly. So it is delegated authority that has been delegated, mm -hmm. which is problematic. So you see, this is one of the uh, main campaign messages that you know, we have to look at the constitution again. Because some of these challenges that we're having comes from that part. In that we only focus on the executive legislature, but the judiciary has been left to its own. Mm -hmm. So now imagine this. Nine people are appointed to the board or the panel of the judiciary or the mm -hmm. Supreme Court, right? Now, any major decision that they take that is going to be representing the judicial arm is actually may not necessarily be representative of the views or wishes of the people in general. It's just those nine individuals who have been appointed by the executive. So it's, it's problematic. That's how some of these things can come. But again, I want to see a, a time when such issues of causing financial loss to the state will not only pick up a victim and nail everything on that person. Like I said, there are checks and balances to make sure no one individual can cause these issues. Right. That there's a long line or there's a long paper trail of people who have been involved in this. It will be good and seen to be more... Um, it will be more equitable mm -hmm. or be more fair or just if you could see all these people who were directly involved stand trial for that charge of cost of financial loss to the state. But in any case, I look at these things and I'm tempted to believe this is actually political persecution and not prosecution. Really? I said, I'm tempted to believe mm. so. Like I've said, if causing financial loss to the state, like I've already said, is not an individual affair, and that there are so many people who are in that line of duty, I don't see how the buck lies with just one individual to carry those. There were two, those. though. Her no. and her head of operations. Yes, that's what I mean, yes. But I'm saying before monies are cleared at the Ministry of Finance for any of these things, you have to have all the authorizations and all the processes checked before the money can be released. So even if she and the head of operations were culpable, yes. When whatever they did or the request they sent to the uh, Ministry of Finance reached there, and of course you have to even bring it back of Ghana here, because before one CD can leave in the name of government expenditure, all these checks and balances have to be met. So how then do these two people only stand or carry all those charges? That's what I'm saying. So I would like to see a, a review of our justice system, our judicial service. Okay. One from the representation of the people in there, and that is there's not delegated authority that is delegated, mm. and that some of these issues will be opened up but it's not just at the, at the doorstep or the foot of just a few individuals, okay. but that we can be seen to be more democratic and that justice is being served. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ni. I'll quickly read some messages. Right. But before then, I'll tell you to go to Franco Trading Enterprise to get all your gadgets. Is it mobile phones you're looking for? Is it a tabletop fridges? Is it CCTV cameras? Look no further. Just go to Franco Trading Enterprise and they will serve you. Download the app on your phone and, you know, simp just download the app on your phone. Franco Trading app. That is it. Or you can go to the website www.francotradingenterprise. Franco Trading Enterprise still from Papa Perfier. Let me quickly read the message messages that we have of course we love our viewers and we are super grateful that you always do send in your messages to us this one says good morning my sister tell the ndc man in their time that he should tell us what ndc did to me npp is far doing well uh, for the name of kumasi pa i'm cool in fact yesterday night joy prime what happened you sometimes behave like ndc rebel movie too you guys they repeat the old stuff <laughs> we gave you rebel movies eh? <laughs> forgive us okay <laughs> so Nalado is going to uh commission jm's a merry plant in fact beautiful rosalind mpp has no shame mpp under nana has wasted Ghanaian's time master raman tuna sola okay good morning rosie and your panelists i'm trying to get there's something on this screen that it's just I don't know what he's doing here anyway <laughs> good morning rosalind and your panelists oh my goodness Ooh. I don't know what's happening. Let me see. Okay. You're always looking stunning and charming. Please, have you visited the... The... Pe for if... Okay. It's okay. Have you visited the performance? Okay, tracker, the performance yeah. tracker. Yeah. It's full of uh, six to 16 seater toilets and assembly men and women project. Rosie... To have you taking note that anytime MPP comes to government, the country is always tagged as drugs hub and they are the main culprit. Rosie Alan couldn't even message, uh, manage a cassava and sugar factory. So Alan and MPP, the value is the same. UK at Kweu. Good morning, Rosie. All right, what's happening? 
Good morning, Rossi. Uh, the Dansuman High Street in Ablekuma, West Constituency, Dansuman Roundabout, uh, to Exhibition Roundabout, not my hometown, Ima. When I came to Accra this weekend, light up our roads. Thank you so much, Kwam uh, and Anakwesi Odame. Very grateful that you could send this. Uh, we are trying to raise awareness on the no street lights on our streets. We need uh, the lights lit. Another appointee of ja John Mahama has succeeded, has successfully been thrown uh, behind bars. More to follow in Sawam prison will justify the real armed robbers in this country. Amino in Sawam. Hey, Amino, you want more people, eh? Good morning, Madam Host, the MPP. Uh, the NPP, they should stop the propaganda of this so-called trailer and get the NDC Green Book, which is the best trailer that can provide better performance to pack from Tamale. To pack again says that, Madam, uh, this 419 driver and his mate uh, do have anything, don't have anything good to offer the good people of Ghana apart from changing names of existing projects. MPP must go 2024. This one says, good morning. Please, how far will the IGP leak tape report? Hey, Baumia should return all his salaries, allow us his free electricity and water, kickbacks, etc. If he claims he's not in charge and has not uh, has done nothing to improve our lives before asking Ghanaians for power. Simon Bakurugu. Hi, Roslyn. Okay. Hi, Rosalind. The jailing of former managers of Maslock is another evidence of selective justice by the Attorney General, who is quick to prosecute, uh, persecute political opponents while MPP guys loot and kill openly with impunity. Indeed, the Attorney General has outlived his usefulness and must resign because he is a liability to the state and not fit for purpose. Powerly a citizen and not a spectator. Kwabana Acidity, um, Achre, Achre Sua says, Mensa EC chairperson will be the first um, person to start from her position. How can five bi biometric verification devices, BEDs, get missing without any tangible reason under your pre uh, presence? Okay. Ghanaians need independent body to investigate this matter. My regards to Honorable Alaji Collins Dauda of MP4 Esutifi. Es out. Moro from Adringano says, Madam, as the MPP to mention the projects executed by Baumia and that of President, because I seem confused here. All good projects are for Baumia. What then do the President do for the past seven years? Good morning, beautiful Rosalind. The High Court in Accra yesterday convicted and sentenced the former chief executive officer, that's CEO of the microfinance Maslock, said in Atamaklu Atiyonu, to 10 years imprisonment for causing financial loss of 90 million Ghana cities to the state. This is a good step in the right direction and it shouldn't end with her only. There are still other appointees who have on also, one way or the other, cause huge financial loss to the state and must also face justice. Abdul Aziz Jibani, joy. Neighbor, <laughs> neighbor, neighbor. The sentencing of um, Maslow, former Maslow, boss Sedinata Maklati, no, to 10 years in prison is a significant victory for anti corruption efforts in Ghana. It says as a warning to public officials that they will be held accountable for their actions and that there are consequences for betraying the trust of the people. It is essential that the government continues to strengthen its institutions and process to prevent similar incidents from happening in the future. Aaron Bebako Kokomisa. Good morning to you and your panelists. Good morning to you and your panelists. Um, let me come down here. The about video is something about video is something that's a trending, but sincerely it's true that Ghanaians are not seeing the impact of teachers. Journalists are not speaking for teachers about the bad treatment by various governments. We need vocal people like journalists to spread our pace and agonize we teachers are going through. Only God knows it's a curse to be a to become a teacher or bad is it a curse to become a teacher or uh, bad to come to become a teacher. Oh, don't say that. You'll be fine, okay? You'll be fine. Good morning once again, Madam Host. Uh, Rosalind, NDC appointees um, uh, got up in the web again, caught up in the web. Okay, Dr. Balmia, the savior, will grow president of the republic, become the president of the republic uh, come 7 December. Matthias Busai. I got your name right, Busai, uh, Masai, Komla, Buem Constituency, Jasikin. 
Hello, Rosalie. You look good this morning. Thank you so much. Uh, in your outfit, please send the NPP man out of the house because, oh, <laughs> I can't send him out of the house. This guy for Jamba, Jessica. Jessica, thank you. Anyway, so that will, that's all time will permit us. Um, that's all time will permit us. So, gentlemen, thank no you problem. so much for being here. Thank I'm you, super I'm grateful saying. that you make time this morning. A big thank you. So, let me start with closing remarks. Um, I, maybe I should start. Who wants to start a closing remark? Ni, ni start. Right, okay. So, yeah. um, my closing remarks here will be my appeal to the Ghanaian youth again, yes. Um, this is a decisive moment in our politics, our national politics, and yes, it's time for us to make history. You know, the, the youth have always been at the forefront of making political changes in every country across the globe. <coughs> and this is a time where, yes, it's, we have to put Ghana first. We have to make sure we are focused on rescuing and reconstructing this country. And we can do that by joining the movement for change and the visionary leadership of, of Alan Kojo Chamanting. So join us. Let's make this, this change happen. Thank you very much. Great. Right. Well, quickly to the people of Ghana and to the youth of Ghana. I am Dr. Baumir, the man with the bold solutions for this country. Clearly, as president, will take us forward. He's promised, as I said earlier on, to create one million ICT jobs for the youth. Um, he's promised to give t flat tax rates across board for uh, importers, you know, depending on what container size you, you bring. Yeah, just imagine the impact it will make on prices in this country. Of course, he's also promised that he'll make sure that the duties paid at, say, Lomi Port and Tema Port will become standardized or at par. In that way, you know, businessmen and importers will not find, will not find the need to send their staff or pick their staff through a Lomi Port. All right, so imagine the impact it will make on, on, on prices in this country and the impact it will make on our pockets. Baumia is a man, 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 man to go for. He's a man to carry us forward, give him the, give him the driver's seat. Put him in charge. He'll be in charge of the appointment, in charge of everything in this country, and we'll see a better Ghana for ourselves. All right, thank you for it, Gwadeo. Rosalind, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama is that one person that was given little, and he was able to turn that little into something beautiful. They tell you in life that, you know, you trust the one who stands and deals with situations and then makes sure the issues are dealt with. It's just basic. This man had been accused held, criticized, called names, called a criminal. He's gone through it until today. After how many years, they still cannot equate to a quarter of what he did for the people of Ghana with the little that he received. Give amongst your children, the one that you see has the opportunity to take the little and turn it around for the benefit of the rest. Don't give it to that one who will take it out and go smoke with it. John Ramon Muhammad is the man for this. All right, thank you so much, uh, Adele. And uh, actually, Kokoboti Power, you know, the vote is yours. So when you go to the polls, you make a decision on who to vote for. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here. Thank and you. Adele uh, Umar Ibrahim, who represented the NDC, Koko Kwashi, who represented the NPP, and of course, Niai Opari, who represented Movement for Change. That's all time will permit us for this particular segment. And it's probably brought to you by Franco Trading Enterprise. Coming up next is What's Trending with the CEDWA. My name is Rosalind Feli. Do stay. News Flash was brought to you by Franco Trading Enterprise. Steel, fun, papa, fear.